Hi everybody, it's Dory and today is my five year surge anniversary. Five years. Stay tuned because I'm going to be talking about a lot of things leading up to surgery, what I would probably do different, uh, and some of the tips and tricks I've learned along the way. But first, let me start with my spiel. Um, I am 49 years old. I am five foot four inches five, five foot four inches tall. Uh, and on September 12th of 2016, which is exactly five years ago today, uh, I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy weight loss surgery. I had that surgery with Dr. Darren Tischler in Hartford, Connecticut at Hartford Hospital. My highest weight ever was 350 pounds. My day of surgery was 300.5. Uh, the lowest I've seen is 156.3. And my maintenance range that I'm still trying to get to is between 155 and 160. Um, I've never been uh, lower than the 156.3 as an adult. Um, and I did have some regain. Uh, if you guys have been following me, uh, you know that last Friday or two Fridays ago, so about a week and a half ago, I uh, went in for a uh, physical that I had some issues and uh, I stepped on the scale and I was 191.3. Uh, today I'm 180.3. So I have 11 pound loss within that week and um, I feel great, I feel terrific, um, but I'm still on the journey. Just because we get to five years post-op, the journey does not end here. Uh, so let's just jump into it. So I have to confess to you guys that since moving into my new home, I feel like I don't have a really good place to film videos. Like I don't have a good backdrop at all. Um, if I sit on one chair, like I'm in my bedroom now because the kids are home, they're on the first floor and I'm in my bedroom and there's nowhere where I can sit to prop up my phone and there's just, it's just a mess. Uh, if I'm on the first floor, I can do it in the dining room or in the kitchen when I'm cooking. Uh, that's no problem, but I have yet to find uh, what works for me. So let's just jump into, before I get into like the whole thing about the five years and what I've learned, I do want to say that um, losing the weight this last week, week and a half has been fantastic. I feel back to myself. I feel great. Um, I'm back at the gym and I did do a few things leading up to uh, this weight loss within that, that week of reflection that um, I have committed to myself. And one of them uh, I didn't realize was going to be as hard as it is um, or as hard as it's going to be uh, next week. Uh, which I will let you guys know what that is, but I committed to myself that I would log everything I put in my mouth, that I would log on my fitness pal. Um, I think it's Dory's Journey VSG on my fitness pal. Um, but in any event, uh, you can follow me there. I'm an open book. So everything I put in my mouth, I log, I weigh, I track. Uh, the second thing, I was going to intermittent fast between 19 and 21 hours a day. I've been doing that. Um, the third thing was that I was giving up alcohol, wine. Uh, I would have about four ounces to eight ounces of wine every night or every other night, probably five out of seven days, four out of seven days, depending. It would just be a little bit of a glass of, of wine while my husband and I would watch a movie at night. Uh, but I have committed to giving that up for the duration of this year. So no alcohol whatsoever during the duration of this year. The other thing that I made a commitment to myself is that I would uh, make sure that I was having at least 80 to 100 um, ounces of water a day. I have been doing almost 120. Um, you know, mostly I'd say about 90 to 100 have been most days. Uh, so I have committed all those things. And the other thing that I gave up, uh, which isn't, I mean, it, I don't know that it necessarily does anything for me, but I know it does help with my intermittent fasting, and that is that I gave up having my morning coffee. I know you guys are probably freaking out now. Oh my gosh, I don't want to give away, uh, give up my coffee. I do still have coffee. I actually have a mug of coffee right here. Cheers. All that is in there is a K cup. Uh, that one's pecan something I forgot it's from a uh, community coffee and I use a teaspoon and a half of erythritol and then I use about four teaspoons of half and a half that's it 
Um, and so I gave up having my morning coffee because I didn't want it to break my fast. I really wanted to just have my water up until my 19 to 21 hours of intermittent fasting was over. And then I would break my fast with something healthy, some kind of a meal, and then I'd go from there. Uh, I probably have a cup of coffee once a week. Um, yeah, it's probably once a week, possibly twelve, uh, twice a week if I was going to um, need an extra, uh, any extra caffeine in the afternoon, but I usually do not. Uh, today's Sunday. It's more of a relaxed day. I was in my jammies up until I had to run to the store, grab some uh, things for the kids for the week because uh, school is back in session tomorrow. And uh, I did some meal prep today, which I already posted the video. I did uh, my uh, Starbucks uh, rendition of the egg bites, or my rendition of Starbucks egg bites, I should say, and just a bunch of different things, which if you haven't uh, seen it, definitely go uh, uh, check it out. It's just a bunch of meal prep. I did what I eat in a day. So I'm filming this on my five-year surgiversary, and I will post it probably in a few days. I, I just don't want you guys to get so overwhelmed with all of my videos that you're not you know, that you're getting too sick of me. Here I am, I don't post anything for months or a month or three weeks or two weeks and then all of a sudden I'm gonna have, you know, five videos in a day. Um, but in any event, I'm super, super excited to have lost that weight and have gotten down to 180.3. I definitely uh, feel a lot better than I did. Uh, I could tell that I was feeling, you know, very fluffy and, and uh, just swollen. I just was not feeling right. Um, so I'm really excited that I'm back down to 180.3. Uh, like I said, between 155 and 160 would be my absolute like dream uh, maintenance range. So I am fighting to get back there. As I said, I did go back to the gym. I am committing to doing five days a week, Monday through Friday, uh, unless the kids have a day off, because then I can't get there because I have my friend's little boy. So there's five children that I babysit during the day. Well, one that I babysit in my four so five during the day that I just would not be able to get to the gym so um, I started the gym on Thursday I went Thursday I went Friday uh, I'll go starting again tomorrow through Friday and basically I am you know trying to get back into the groove of getting my 10,000 or 15,000 steps per day uh, I definitely want to move my body between 30 and 45 minutes uh, I've been lifting weights. I did a great job um, last Thursday and Friday when I went to the gym to lift uh, lifting weights. It's definitely, I have to get back into it. I'm, I'm definitely, when, when I used to go, I used to be able to lift like 75 pounds and now I'm between 25 and some machines I can do 40. But I'm definitely going to be working a lot on my lower body. I need to get my legs in shape. I need to lose the excess fat. And I also need to do a lot of the, um, the uh, oh, I always have a problem with them. Uh, it's like when you sit back in a chair. I always forget what this is called. Um, uh, I can't think of it. But you guys, I know you're yelling right now at me what it is, and I can't think of it. I keep saying lunges and crunches, and that's not what it is. But in any event, there's a machine that if you sit, you put your feet up and you push um, so that machine I used to be able to do like 300 pounds like years ago and now I think I could only push 90 um, But I'll work my, myself up to it. I definitely want to continue uh, Working up to being able to do the elliptical. I want to do the stairs uh, I want to run on the treadmill. So I'm gonna work up to these things I understand that my body uh, has been kind of out of commission for you know as long as COVID I'm gonna say at least a year and a half my body has been out of commission. So I definitely am going to need to uh, take it slow uh, Consistency is key and uh, And that's what I'm gonna do. So that's what I'm doing going forward. Now. Let's get back to the five years so in the beginning when you know you start going to your classes and if anybody's here watching in your pre-op the best thing i can say is the first thing you want to do is contact your insurance company they're going to tell you uh, if they cover your surgery um, how much they cover if they need a center of excellence where that is in conjunction to where you live uh, they will give you all that information you start out by attending a seminar you'll usually meet the doctors and you know the surgeons and the staff and and they'll tell you all the things that they they need to tell you and 
you know, I, I have uh, realized just by following other people's channels that there are some surgeons that are really strict and there's some that are loosey-goosey. Um, I have more of a strict surgeon. Uh, he's as nice as they come, but he's more strict and, um, you know, he will only operate on you if he thinks that you really have your head on straight as far as commitment. Uh, this is a journey. It is not a piece of cake. It is not something that um, is for the faint of heart. Uh, weight loss surgery is not the easy way out. It is not for the faint of heart. It is not for people who uh, think that they will have the surgery and then the pounds will magically disappear and you will magically go in for plastic surgery and you'll magically be a new person and everything will be great. It is not for that at all. Uh, weight loss surgery is a tool. You'll be hearing that a lot in your journey. Um, I know a lot of you who are listening to me now, you guys know it's a tool. It's something that we use that we uh, can always go back to. Um, you'll hear a lot of YouTubers talk about stretching of the stomach and, um, and, and, you know, different things that, that you can do and, you know, whether you should have a straw or whether you should have this or whether you should have that. And I'm going to make a whole separate video on myths and truths, um, about weight loss surgery. And, but for now, um, I just want to let you guys know that's not the easy way out. It is tough. Uh, this journey has been, um, the surgery itself, I'll tell you from my perspective, uh, my own surgery was a piece of cake. Um, from the time I started the seminar to going to all my classes and doing everything I needed to, I was one of those motivated people. I was one of those people that I was going to keep calling until I got scheduled. I was going to keep calling and making my appointments. I was going to make every appointment they told me to. I'd go to every support group they tell me to. Um, and I was going to do it. And so, um, I did it. I, I got my date. Uh, I remember prepping for the surgery. I remember having the, um, having the, uh, the, uh, diet. I had 10 days of the liquid diet. Uh, and it was, I think a shake in the morning, shake in the afternoon, and then a, a chicken breast, I think in veggies in the afternoon, if, I, if my mind serves me correctly. Um, and I just remember doing that. Um, and I remember there was one time I did cheat on my liquid diet and it didn't, it didn't really matter because it wasn't, I mean, it was kind of cheating, but it, I didn't go crazy. It was one day that I had to, um, we had, our, I already had scheduled tickets to go see a comedian. We saw Sinbad and it was at a, um, Polynesian restaurant. And so that night I did have about maybe two teaspoons of rice. Um, I had a, an egg roll, um, and I think I had a chicken wing. That's all I ate, but it was off plan for that liquid diet. It didn't really do anything because I knew that I was um, adhering to it for the whole nine other days, um, and so my surgery was still a success. It was still great, but that just was something that I wanted to throw in there. We're not all perfect. I know some people look at me as, um, I think they mistake my uh, determination and my motivation for being perfect. And I am far from perfect. I have made lots of mistakes. Um, some that I can go back and, and reflect on and, and I've grown from and some that I wish I didn't make and that I would have uh, stuck to um, where I was. So December of 2019 was when I weighed 156.3. I went back in my fitness pal and I, I go back to those dates in December. I go back to my videos I made in December, uh, you know, to December of 2019. And I reflect on everything and I just wish I would have stayed there. I wish I wouldn't have wanted the cake or wanted the cookies, or I wish I didn't have had the margaritas or I didn't have all these different things. I just wished I would have just stayed there and been happy because in that video, if you guys go back, it's, it's December and it, it's, I think it's titled something like Sunday. Um, I forgot like goal or I don't know what I titled it, but it was a rare Sunday. I would, I used to never make videos on Sundays and it was a rare Sunday to come to you and tell you this. And I remember I have a full body shot in that, in that I have these size, like, I think it was eight jeans on or six. I forget. 
it's in that video but i remember going back probably about nine months ago and reviewing that video and i was so happy that the the joy on my face in that video that just shows me that that is my happy spot that around 160 is my happy place uh when i saw the scale two fridays ago my heart dropped i felt sick i felt like i felt defeated i felt like holy moly what are you doing and it motivated me just to get back on the wagon i hadn't weighed in two months i had just moved things are were out of control and so it wasn't a shock in the fact that it could happen to me because i wasn't eating on plan i was eating up fast food for probably two weeks straight because of um, moving and just not having my refrigerator hooked up not having a stove not having electricity in one house and it was just a whole craziness um but i knew that when i saw that i had to do something and i had no more excuses there was no more moving i have two scales now in my bathroom up here we have two bathrooms we have an upstairs we have a downstairs um we have a beautiful home we have money to be able to buy food um, we're not going without, I can buy grass-fed meat, I can buy um, anything that I want, I can meal prep, I have the time. Now, especially since the kids went back to school, they started back to school on August 31st. We'll just round it up to September 1st. So, September 1st, and today is September 12th, so 11 days in between, I mean, they've been in school for nine. So, nine days of school, and um, it's been wonderful. It's been a... Uh, uh, a breath of fresh air just to be able to have time for me to be able to know that I can do this I can get back on any of you guys watching now you can get back on you guys can do it uh, you guys we have the tool uh, I don't want to go on, on a tangent here I've, I've mentioned it before in, in a couple of videos back I've told you guys about what I'm doing uh, told you guys what you could do not to have excuses let me just have a sip Mm. But I want this video to reflect just how grateful I am for this sleeve. So, so grateful for having this surgery. Um, I am grateful for my husband being able to be employed, that we had insurance at the time. We had, we had um, United Healthcare. They covered my whole entire surgery except for $500 deductible. I feel so fortunate that that happened. Um, I feel so fortunate uh, that I was able to have an amazing surgeon. I feel so fortunate that even today, as of today, that my surgical team is there rooting me on, that I can make an appointment anytime, and I still go to the support groups, even though they're on Zoom at the moment, uh, which actually next, not this Saturday, two Saturdays from now, I think it's the 25th, September 25th, um, I'm going to be traveling about an hour away to Connecticut. I live in Massachusetts, but I'm going to be moving, to, I mean, I'm um, uh, going down to Connecticut to uh, meet everybody in person because we are doing a walk for obesity. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think what it's really called. Walk from obesity, that's what it is. And so we have a team and we I signed up and I'm getting a t-shirt and I'm gonna walk. I, I don't even know how long it is, I just signed up. I said, I wanna just see my, my team in person. I wanna see my surgeon, I'll be walking alongside him. He's amazing. Um, and so anyways, uh, so I'll be doing that, but a good support group would be, would be fantastic. Uh, another thing that I would caution everybody about is, um, in our support group, we have a lot of pre-op people, and we have people who always ask the question, you know, can I can I never eat chips and popcorn again? Can I never have candy and blah, 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 like all these different things? And so if you're just wanting to lose the weight just to go back to old habits, I would caution you against it. It's, it's going to be, you know, you're going to be wasting your time. Um, can you go ahead and have a little piece of cake here and a chip there and stuff to just enjoy as you go about your life? Yes. Should you? Uh, it could be okay. Uh, it really depends on what type of person you are. Are you a binge eater? Are you someone who 
relies on food when you're feeling emotional? Is it a comfort? Is it just that you're enjoying life and you would like to taste it? Because we can do that. Uh, but one thing that I would do differently if I had to do it all over again is I wouldn't divulge or indulge in the extra things, the extra, um, you know, chips and popcorn and candy. There's so many other things out there on the market that are more healthy for you um, instead of going and eating the really bad stuff. You know, would I have a bite of my daughter's birthday cake? Yes. Uh, would I have two pieces? No. Would I even have a full piece? I shouldn't. And so I think I'd be in a different place if I didn't test it out. Another thing too is uh, sleeve and RNY, uh, the gastric bypass, are very, very, very different as far as being able to handle desserts and sugar. Um, gastric bypass patients cannot handle the sugar. They will have a, a uh, thing called dumping syndrome. They, would, they will want to like die. If, if I'm told it feels horrid and you just lay there and you just have to wait for it to pass. Uh, I know one of the YouTubers that I watch, uh, if she has too much ice cream, she can have a tiny bit of ice cream, she has just a tiny bit extra, she is in for one of those bouts. Uh, sleeve patients, we don't have it. I could, I could have as much sugar as I wanted, I could have as much ice cream as I wanted, um, and I won't have a reaction from it. Uh, except that I'll have weight gain, and of course then your mental health suffers because I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but for me, when I see that number on the scale or I feel bloated or I feel yucky, even though I was enjoying whatever food I was having prior to that, it's not worth it. The guilt, the shame, the mental like health aspect of it, it's just not worth it. And so that's what I would change. Uh, I wouldn't have tested my limits. I wouldn't have divulged uh, into, you know, different different types of foods or different types of sweets. Uh, I would have just stuck to plan and just know that it was going to be okay. That we're not depriving ourselves if we can't have the cake. W what is that? Like, why do we feel like if we don't have the chocolate, like we're in trouble? Like, we're missing out on life. We're not missing out on life. Life is so much more than, than, than food. Like, and I think that's probably one of the main things that I hope that you guys take from this video. Like life is so much more important than eating food and really warping your body. Get out there, enjoy life, live life, get out there and, and see your friends and, and pray and meditate and and all of this um i'm actually starting a meditation thing tomorrow uh with uh, revelation wellness is a group you can find them online but they're having a um starting tomorrow i believe it's i want to say it's 30 days could be two weeks but um anyways you pay whatever you can pay i paid 10 bucks and uh <clears throat> and it's gonna to start tomorrow and basically it's just about your mental health and just taking a break. Having time to meditate every morning, they send you these, these videos and there's exercising and there's talking and there's people that you can talk to. Um, I'm starting that tomorrow. I think it's gonna be a great, great escape for me. I'm gonna be at the gym, I'm still logging, I'm still doing the things I need to because I really need to fight really hard at this point at five years out. The first year and a half, is your honeymoon period after that it's not that it's does doesn't do good you can work it you can work your sleeve and your pouch any way you want it is all up to you guys uh, but the first year and a half seize it don't cheat don't go off don't go crazy just seize the opportunity because then if you can get at goal or pretty close to goal in maintenance you're gonna have such an easier time working in a little bit here and a little bit there if you just wanted to have a little bit of indulgences. But other than that, um, definitely stick to plan. Um, I can't believe it's my five year surge anniversary. I feel like I need to do a separate video. If you guys have any questions, please put them below. I'll do a Q and A video for you. Um, but that's it for now, guys. I've talked and it's almost a 25 minute video. And if you guys lasted this long, I love you. Uh, I, I want nothing but the best for you guys. And I will see you in the next video.